Off the Hook, airing on OffTheHookSports.com. Your home for real news, real opinions, and what really matters about Tennessee athletics. The Off the Hook podcast at OffTheHookSports.com or Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or wherever you go for your favorite podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, iHeart. Like, share, follow, subscribe. Off the Hook with Dave Hooker starts now. It is a game week edition of the Vol Report with John Adams. I am Dave Hooker, and it's brought to you by our friends at Vols Automotive Group and Big Orange Phillies. I'll tell you more about them. First, I need you to make sure and hit that subscribe and like button so that we show up on your feed more often. John Adams of the Knoxville News Sentinel and does just a fantastic job for the USA Today Network. Love having him on board. And John, I want to get right to it. If I were to paint a beautiful picture of a season opener you're on thursday night um you're in year two you're playing a lackluster opponent but the stadium's refurbished renovated really i mean tennessee the stage could not be set any better to start a season am i wrong no it's it's kind of what you look for in in an opening game i mean there have been stadium renovations but also there's there's an optimistic air about tennessee football and no matter what happens in the first game, it probably won't curtail that uh, optimism, unless, of course, Ball State turns into Georgia State <laughs> and uh, Josh Heupel turns into Jeremy Pruitt. Then you have a massive problem. However, it, it goes back to Bowling Green last year. Tennessee won handily. Wasn't that impressive in the first half. But fans can excuse that. Fans can say, well, it's the opener and everything's not nailed down, that sort of thing. But I expect Tennessee to really roll and to roll right away because it's got an experienced team. And if it does that, I think fans' excitement will carry over, along with a little trepidation, into the Pittsburgh game, which will be much more competitive. Yeah, Pitt's a better team than I think a lot of Tennessee fans realize. Probably better up front on both sides of the ball. Um, but we'll get there. I think Tennessee also benefits from having this mini sort of off week uh, heading into that game. Um, And, you know, like I said, um, the excitement uh, is at an all time high. I can't remember heading into a season it being this high, John. Can you, do you, do you recall a season in which optimism was, was this strong? Uh, Maybe uh, you go back to 2016 Tennessee okay. finished strong in 15 under Butch Jones. Uh, then had a fast start in 2016, so everything gets ramped up. It beats Georgia and Florida, and everybody thinks Butch Jones is going to be the next General Neyland. Didn't quite work out that way. He, was, he wasn't he was even Private Neyland. But he had the haircut. <laughs> yeah. He, <laughs> he would have passed inspection. Yeah, he, he would have passed. He wouldn't yeah. have passed anything else, but he would have passed inspection. No, when Nick Saban said we're only going to pay you twenty four thousand dollars a year to be an uh, uh, an analyst on our staff, he said that's no problem. My haircut co- cost only six dollars. So, John, the um, with, with with Tennessee and and the optimism around this program, how much of that is is pinned on the offense and what they were able to do last year? Uh, very much so. I don't think anybody looks at Tennessee's defense and says, man, we're really going to shut some teams down this year. I think people expect more of the same. I think that's a very realistic outlook. It might be a little better. Maybe it'll force a few more turnovers, uh, maybe make a few more plays behind the line. But no one looks at this, at this as an uber-talented defense. So I think everybody is all in on the offense. You averaged 39.3 points per game last year with modest talent. And so there's an infatuation with this system that Josh Heupel puts out there. We've talked about it before. The guy's a really good offensive coach, and he gets receivers open about as well as anybody in college football today. So when you look at, I think people kind of write off the defense, and they look at, okay, what are some questions? What would be some things you look for? In, a, in an opener, everybody, I think, wants to see how the Southern California transfer, Brew McCoy, does. He's a big physical receiver, and so that's that's one of them. And who's got 
who will be the left offensive tackle if you get a, want to get a little more inside football? How well will they protect Hendon Hooker? And then it's kind of about, is Hendon Hooker significantly better? Can he hit the deep ball more? I think every th- all the questions are about the offense. I think if you're a Tennessee fan heading into the Ball State game or heading into the season, you would say, can the off can the defense be a C plus? Yes, I will take that right now. I think they would take a C right now. I, I'm not going to argue with you. I tell you who's who is never a C. They're always a plus when it comes to customer service and integrity. It's Biles Automotive Group. It is car shopping made easy. That's because they have an awesome selection, exceptional, exceptional cars there on the lot. They are available. I know they're tough to find, but they can do it right there at Biles Automotive Group. They'll take care of your financing and they'll keep you going with their great car service as well. So, uh, John, I did want to ask you about Kirk Herb Street's notion that NIL is for current players, not for prospects. Uh, and, and Nico Maleva got pulled into this whole thing um, because I don't know that it's actually been reported that he took $8 million for three years, but nevertheless, John, he, he got pulled into this. He got quoted in the LA Times. Just your thoughts on where NIL is now, where it will be in five years. I don't know that we know. We have no clue, and, and the NCAA doesn't, and neither is Kirk Herbstreet. It may be Kirk's uh, lobbying for the NCAA director's job, and he's spouting the po- uh, the uh, you know the uh, party line. But you'd uh, have to take a pay cut. <laughs> he w- very much so. But I, I really think with the NIL, yeah, this is what it's intended to do, and that's what every administrator would say. Players come to college. Uh, they are able to use their name, image, and likeness to profit off that once they're at a school. But you know, I- anybody that's followed college football, I mean, these guys are going to cheat every chance they get. And this isn't even cheating. This is in a gray area. It, so, it, of course, it's going to become a recruiting, recruiting lure. How could anybody have looked at this and thought otherwise? There's just no way. Here's a... And here's the other thing. If you say, yeah, we're going to pay you when you're here at, at school X, we will reward you. We, you can profit off this. You can make a lot of money. Well, in the recruiting process, you will wonder, how could that not be a factor in where you sign? You will wonder, well, how much can I make? And so they'll write a number down on a sheet of paper and just leave it there in the living room of the recruits family. Uh, it, it's just, come on, common sense. Well, John, it's like, it's like for Tennessee, I think Tennessee fans need to look at this as it's buying versus renting. So they were able to get a short term kick out of Nico and being able to get him on campus, highest rated player we think ever at Tennessee uh, to commit. And uh, he will sign and enroll in January. But the long term is, I believe, having covered covered recruiting for way too many years, that there are a lot of incoming prospects that will see how your guys are living. You know, are they driving a beat up Toyota or are they driving a big new pickup truck from Viles Automotive Group? There is a big difference. Are they taking you out to eat at Crystal's or are you going to Big Orange Phillies? That's where I am on this whole thing, John. And I, I think that when Tennessee has visitors and they see their players are living right, because Knoxville ain't Starkville. There's more money to be thrown around 85 scholarship players. I think that's where it really benefits Tennessee long term. I, I think some fans are looking at this with the short term lick. Let's get it. No, long term, I think it's where it helps Tennessee. Well, I, I saw where Texas Tech is paying everybody $25,000 a year. Okay. Oh, so they split it up. Okay. Yeah. So, but, but the point being, they're not actually giving a recruit that money, but they're saying what we're going to do. So to me, that's a good move. You, so the recruit, you're right. When the recruit check comes to Tennessee or goes to Alabama or wherever, he should have a good idea of what prosperity looks like and how the guys that are already there, if they're saying, man, I, I need to take out a loan just to, 
to eat this summer. I, I, that's not what they want to hear. Uh, and yeah, they can look at the cars they're driving. And we, we know the kind of cars some of those guys were driving when there was no such thing as name, image, and likeness. It was all name, image, and under the table. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. We'll get to your, uh, I want to get your prediction for uh, Tennessee is uh, depending on w- when you're watching this, uh, you can either go watch Tennessee hammer ball state at big orange <laughs> Phillies right there on Maynardville Pike. It is uh, North Knoxville. It's close to Maynardville. So a great place to hang out. They've got awesome food. I had the wings this past weekend and they were unbelievable. Great food. They've got billiards. They've got darts. They've got the whole nine yards there at big orange Phillies. So whether you're, preparing for ball state to get hammered or they just got hammered. We remind you to hit the subscribe and like button. Um, John, your prediction for the upcoming season, where do you see the balls? I've been on record. I, I think Tennessee wins nine games this year. Well, I'm there with you that I think that's kind of high end. I think some people are looking and say, well, they could go 10 and two because the only teams on their schedule that are obviously better or Alabama and Georgia, that's true. But unless you have Alabama or Georgia-like talent, you can't count on winning every game that could be a swing game. You, you need to stumble somewhere along the line, as Tennessee did last year against Ole Miss, against Pittsburgh. Those are very much winnable games, and they couldn't quite pull it off. So I think you lose one. I, I, I just think going according to form, you lose to Georgia, Alabama, and then you split two games with with LSU and South Carolina. I'm higher on South Carolina than most people are. I'm almost I've almost got to the point where I think that could be a tougher game than LSU. I know injuries factor into all of this, but South Carolina playing at home with a really good offense that would match up well against Tennessee's pass defense. So that's kind of how I see it. I guess you're kind of on the same page. Yeah, I don't like South Carolina as much as you. I, th- I think that LSU is kind of scary because th- I think things got so off the rails last year that maybe the talent was significant. Well, it had to be significantly better, but way significantly better than it was last year when Ed Orgeron was trying to meet every uh, young co-ed on campus. And <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I just think that's not – Brian Kelly may do, do a bad impression, but I think he's a better coach. Yeah. That Go was. Tigers. Go Tigers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't do it, Ogeron. I'm sure you can. You're better with impersonations than I am. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Uh, I, I do think with LSU, you're right. They have more talent. They've recruited so well in, under Ed Ogeron. That team fell off of the map. I think it was one of those cases, kind of like Florida last year, too. They had more talent than what their records show. Things went bad, and they didn't handle adversity well. The, the, the problem I have with LSU is I kind of thought Miles Brennan would be the quarterback. He's not even playing football anymore, so I was wrong on that. Guy has a big arm. So then you're left with, uh, gosh, I always want to call Nussmeyer. I can't help but think of his dad. I always call him Doug, Nuss, Doug Nussmeyer. But any- Doug, Doug Nussmeyer's son. <laughs> yeah. That Nussmeyer kid, uh, great expectations for him. They hadn't really learned his first name yet, but he's going to be something. Big deal. Okay, so Nussmeyer, if he's the starting quarterback, okay, but if Jaden Daniels from Arizona State is the starting quarterback, I've seen him play, and he's a really good open field runner. So is Mike Wright of Vanderbilt, but how many SEC teams can he beat? I just don't know if he throws the ball well enough to to flourish. And if they don't have a – LSU doesn't have a really good quarterback. I mean, throwing the ball, that receiving core, which could be the best in the SEC, will be wasted. Uh, so those are my concerns about, about LSU. Fair. Um, I, I, I do love how their starting quarterback gets a little NIL money and just leaves – mid preseason camp and <laughs> yeah. keeps the money just i got this it's uh, all good yeah, yeah. 
Hey, you were uh-huh. you were paying me to practice, right? Because there were some cameras out there. That's what you're doing. Um, <laughs> what are your what are your thoughts on Georgia? Because man, that thing gets hot and cold, John. I I talked to some people. They're like they're going to reload. They're Alabama 2.0. And I talked to other people. Lost too much. I tend to lean towards that they're going to reload. But your thoughts? Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. I think they're going to reload. They're recruited too well. They've got some guys that you really hadn't heard of, much like in Alabama's case. You just see them at the end of the games, and you might say, yeah, that guy could be pretty good. And next year, he's all SEC. I, Alabama, you talk about that. When you look at Alabama, you say they have two of the best players in the country, Bryce Young, the Heisman winner, Will Anderson, the great, the best defensive player in the country. I look at Georgia, and I think they have two of the best players in the country in Jalen Carter in the defensive line, who is better than Jordan Davis was last year. Jordan Davis, a first-round draft pick. Then I look at uh, I look at the offense. Brock Barrow is one of the best tight ends I've ever seen. I mean, his freshman year was amazing. I So I really like Georgia. Uh, I think it's really close to Alabama, closer maybe than most people do the overall depth of talent. Uh, I've kind of, I know you don't like Stetson Bennett quarterback, but my opinion of his, of him has changed drastically over the course of two seasons. I think he can make plays as a runner and he's gotten better on the deep ball. So I like him. I, I just think Georgia will be really, really good. And let's face it. Georgia plays in the sec East. If Georgia was in the, in the sec West, I'd have more questions about them, but not in the East. No, that's fair. And um, with, with Georgia, too, the thing that you have to remember is, you know, uh, Kirby Smart has an advantage over Nick Saban. Atlanta is right down the road. And that is, I mean, a- Alabama has actually grown a lot in in terms of the number of prospects who end up in the NFL, but Still, Atlanta's Atlanta. I mean, that's an incredible advantage to have over your other rival. Yeah, and uh, they also have the advantage of playing the SEC championship game in Atlanta. That's not bad. Didn't help them last year. Right. Uh, but I like the way they're calling their opener against Oregon uh, at a neutral site. I, I wonder how our Oregon players will feel about that midway through the first quarter. Man, glad we're playing this game on a on a, at a neutral site. We don't have to worry about the Georgia crowd noise. Well, you you say that they're a, they're very lucky they're not playing it forty five miles northeast in Athens with that mugginess from Oregon. You talk about wilting, quack quack. I mean, that thing would be done in a quarter. That's that's, that's a really good point. Uh, I don't know what our Oregon was thinking when they wanted to schedule this game, but uh, I, I do like uh, I do like uh, Georgia in, in the spread. Seventeen half point spread against the top twenty five team. That's pretty significant. No, I agree. Uh, Biles Automotive Group is your place to stop and have your vehicle taken care of. Have purchase a new vehicle. And know that integrity is at the core of Biles Automotive Group and Big Orange Phillies. It is finally football time in Tennessee and at Big Orange Phillies. So get down there. I highly recommend the wings, but it's all good. And you're going to be able to shoot some stick, throw some darts, and have a good time at Big Orange Phillies on Maynardville Pike. So this is a production of Off the Hook Sports. For John Adams, I am Dave Hooker.